Boston Heart Panel that we run, I uh, talk about the diabetes panel, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the cardiovascular risk factors. And we actually, I'll give an entire presentation just on these cardiovascular risk factors. That's how important I believe it is, because so many people go to their physician and they just get a total up cholesterol, total LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, maybe an HDL. And it doesn't show you a very good picture of your cardiovascular health, and I'll show you why. What we run in this test is we want to know the inflammatory marker. Remember I talked about the problem is going to be high blood sugar, and it's going to be high levels of inflammation. So we want to know what your levels of inflammation are, specifically at the blood vessel wall. That's what's going to lead to the plaque, blood clot, heart attack, and stroke. We'll also measure fatty acid balance. Everybody hears about omega-3 fatty acids and how important they are. We can see if you're deficient, if you're sufficient, and where you're at, how much you need. Insulin resistance, we talked about homocysteine is another great marker because the higher the levels of homocysteine is, the more damage to the blood vessel wall, the higher your cardiovascular risk. And she talked about, and I just mentioned Hawthorne as well, strengthening the heart muscle itself. Uh, NT propion P will be secreted from the heart muscle when it is weak. So if that's really, really elevated, that can give us a sign the heart muscle is weak and does need additional support. A lot of research on that as well. Yeah. So cholesterol, we've all heard about cholesterol. It's why people are put on statins, usually a high total LDL cholesterol. It might surprise you to know there is no such thing as LDL cholesterol. It doesn't exist. There's the LDL particle, and then there's cholesterol that's carried within that particle. You can see that, so they're two different things. I really want to educate people on that. That's a very, very important point. Because when you get a total LDL cholesterol, all you know is the blue inside of that circle. That's all you know, is that number. But what's the most important thing is, what is the size of the LDL particle? You can think of it as a boat carrying cargo. The LDL particle is the boat. The cargo is the total cholesterol carried inside it. You've got to know the size of that particle. The reason that's so important is because the particle size, if those are small particles, that's what penetrates the blood vessel wall and causes damage. If your LDL particles are mainly large, they're not going to be a problem because they're not going to penetrate that blood vessel wall and cause damage. But if you just know your total LDL, the blue inside, but was that contained inside all these small particles, or was it just contained in one large particle, it's not a problem. And we know the problems that can go along with statins if they're prescribed just based on that, because we get muscle pain, we get fatigue, and the reason for that is they deplete CoQ10 in the body. So this test will run that. It'll show us are the particles mainly small, dense LDL very important. LD, uh, HDL cholesterol, which we know is your good cholesterol. Not only is your total HDL cholesterol important, but the size of your HDL particle is important as well. The reason HDL is so heart protective is because if there is cholesterol deposited in the blood vessel wall, HDL, the HDL particle, will remove that cholesterol and take it back to the liver. That's why it's heart protective. The question is, is HDL functioning like it should to remove that cholesterol? What matters? The size of the particle and the strength of that particle. The test also measures that. It measures the size of the HDL particle and it measures the strength of the HDL particle. Yes, and to your question about the research of botanicals, all these markers, they're not unique to naturopathic medicine, they're in the medical literature. You can go to pubmed.gov and put in any of these markers I'm talking about and see their relation to cardiovascular disease risk. Very well researched. The botanicals and these markers we're talking about. We just take the time to run them to get to the underlying cause of what's going on with the patient. Mm -hmm. Inflammation is very, very, this is probably one of the most important parts of this test. A lot of people probably have C-reactive protein or high sensitivity C-reactive protein. That is inflammation throughout the body. In MPO, and again, right in the medical literature, LPPLA2, those are markers of inflammation of the blood vessel wall itself. Very, very important. The higher these are, the higher the plaque is going to be within the artery wall. And I've had somebody ask me before, is there anything we can do about that? Absolutely there is, and I'll show you a case that I just recently had. After running this test, implementing our treatments, non-drug treatments, nutrition, botanical medicine she's talking about, and various nutrients, and we can see that regress, and we've seen that with the lab. We can see that MPO, LP, PLA. LPPLA2, high sensitivity C reactive protein, they can come down. She'll talk about some of those anti inflammatory botanicals.
CoQ10, very important. I have that in here because the test runs out as well. People ask all the time, how do I know if I need CoQ10? How do I know how much I need? Well, symptoms are going to tell us that. But this test also measures levels of CoQ10. If somebody is deficient or if they're sufficient CoQ10. And a lot of people say, well, I'm taking a supplement. Is it good? Am I absorbing it? Well, we need to measure it. We need to see where your levels are at. Um, you might have enough. That would have to make you. So results, success. I had a 40-year-old male. Type 2 diabetes diagnosis. We're talking about type 2 diabetes and blood sugar lowering mechanicals. Definitely had full blown. If you see uh, the results on there, the first lab we ran on him is on the left side. Right next to it on the right side, that's going to be the lab we re ran four months later. And you can see, you know, about fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, he had full blown diabetes. He also had very high risk factors for cardiovascular disease, which on the upper right side, you'll see all those inflammatory markers. And one of the most important ones I talked about, that MPO, you'll see it was like an 898, which is an extremely high risk factor for not only cardiovascular disease, but having a near-term heart attack. And then you can see with that four months later, how that was almost cut in half after the treatments that we implemented. And that's exactly what happened four months later. If you look at that hemoglobin A1C, if you look at his insulin resistance, if you look at the fasting glucose in the column right next to it four months later, you can see that the type 2 diabetes is being reversed. Some of the nervine botanicals that Dr. Davidson talked about, such as lemon, lemon balm and ashwagandha, I use. Now, why would I use those for a type 2 diabetic for high blood sugar? And the reason is if we can take down those catecholamines I talked about. That will lower blood sugar. High stress levels, that increases that increases blood glucose levels. So we lowered his stress, we lowered his blood glucose levels, in addition to a lot of other things as well, but that was part of it, two of those mechanicals. So lower the inflammation that you see, if you see that MPO at 898, then I think it went down to like a four something. So we cut it in half and almost, in four months, we cut that in half, the highest risk factor. Uh, two of the anti-inflammatory botanicals that she's gonna talk more about, I use curcumin, which is in turmeric. She'll talk about that. And then to lower the blood sugar and to lower oxidative stress, we also use green tea extract within a formulation, not in isolation. The curcumin I use in isolation, but the green tea extract I use in a diabetic formulation that we'll use for type 2 diabetics. Not only was the type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular risk being reversed, he lost 30 pounds and his energy went from a 2 out of a 10 to an 8 out of a 10, all within four months. And because I scared the hell out of this patient <laughs> with those markers. He was 100% compliant. Now, yes, we do people need people to be compliant. But when you send somebody down and you put those lab markers in front of them and say, listen, you've got to make some changes or some bad things are going to happen, they're usually compliant. It helps a lot. And that's why we got the results and the success that we did. So here it is right here. That's what you guys have. If you just go to this middle part on the left side, you can see that SDF, SD LDL, that's your small dense LDL cholesterol. And you can see his, I know it's kind of hard to read, but it was a 37, and then four months later, after the treatment, we took it to a 23, which is very, very significant. That showed us those LDL particles, which I told you important, remember, not that total LDL cholesterol, it's the particle size. His particles, he had small particle size, but you can see, going from 37 to 23, those particles are becoming larger and less of a problem within the blood vessel wall. Excuse me? Yeah. Why do doctors not do that? Or I get that question every <laughs> single time I give this lecture. And I say, when you go back to your doctor, please ask them. Ask them why they don't run it. And ask them why they don't run it. <laughs> and ask them, will you please, will you please run this test for me? And they can do that. If they, yes, if they want to run a Boston Heart, absolutely. Oh, any, any physician can oh, run so a they Boston know, Heart. they panel. know what Boston Heart, if you say Boston Heart, they know Not necessarily, <laughs> not won't necessarily know the panel. Most of your integrated MDs will. Okay. Yes. Uh, a lot of the uh, lecture I went to in New York City just a few months back, it was fantastic. It was from this integrative cardiologist. It was an MD, she was a cardiologist. And she was talking about her transformation. She practiced uh, conventional medicine for like 15 years. And then she went to this integrative medicine conference in San Diego. And she goes, it's like the blinders just fell off my eyes. She goes, my eyes were finally opened. 
and she learned about this testing, she learned about our treatments, and she goes, I realized I wasn't getting my patients better. She goes, when I found out about testing like this, this advanced testing and how to treat, and what nutrition and nutraceuticals and botanicals can do, she goes, I, it was never the same, and that's her entire practice, and she's an MD cardiologist, and the only difference was is that she acquired the information, and that's what I find out. They either People either know or they don't know, but once they know and their eyes are open to it, they love it, and that's how they start to practice. But I encourage everyone, please ask them. Yeah. One, one more question about this. But, um, I mean, is it my insurance to cover naturopaths and typical blood work? Is this not considered typical lab? What's fantastic work? about the Boston Heart Test is, is if you work? have private insurance other than Sigma, it is covered. The most you will pay for this test is $65. Any private insurance other than Sigma, the organic tests that you're in test, all private insurance cover it except Aetna. You, the upfront cost is 149 for that test if you have private insurance other than that. What's, so, the, up, what's the upfront cost for the Boston Heart? Well, you don't pay an upfront cost, but the most you would pay, you might pay nothing depending on your insurance, but the most you'll pay is $65. Oh, oh, oh. Inexpensive tests with private insurance. Yeah, and it gives us so much information of what's going on with the patients and it guides specific treatments. Because patients, the one thing they'll say, okay, well, supplements are expensive. We say, yes, they are. That's why we like to test, because that guides us a specific treatment of exactly what you need. Would the insurance cover the supplements to follow up on that question? It would depend on your insurance, usually not. No. Usually, unfortunately, they don't reimburse for that. But what's great about these tests is that that can save you money because it can pinpoint to exactly what you need. Do you need CoQ10? You know, do you need these nervine botanicals? Do you need omega 3 fatty acids? Do you need vitamin D? That can show us if you need. And why the level of money. Yes. I have a question. Like, uh, when, you, when you do your insulin test, it gives you just sort of a snapshot of what your insulin level is at that day. Yeah. When you do the hemoglobin A1C, it gives you the three month average, I guess, of what your insulin is, has been over a three month period. The fact of glucose. So it's the your glucose blood sugar. over the past three months. The hemoglobin no. A1C, right? That's your glucose, yeah, oh, okay. over the past three months. Right. So, like, these tests, are these a snapshot, or are these going to tell you what? you know, has been going on for a while, you know, or is it just a snapshot, like when you get a different result, if you do the test a week later? That depends on what you change, not if you continue doing things the same. That's why the snapshot is helpful, because if you were to continue with your diet, your exercise, everything else, yeah, most likely it's going to be the same. But that's why I would test, because I'll get it. If I see a very, very high fasting insulin or insulin resistance, I tell the patient, okay, we intervene now. You don't have pre-diabetes, you don't have diabetes. But you got high fasting insulin, you got insulin resistance, let's stop it now. Do these interventions, okay? This is what you need to implement in your diet. You gotta start exercising more. Here is the botanicals and nutraceuticals, and based on the other markers, here's what you need. And that's why we retest. Oh, then you retest. Okay. Then we retest. Yep, and that's what you see here four right, months right. later. So I'll test, and I test four months later, and then after that, I test six months later, and then after that, I'll test a year later to show where that patient is. Very, very helpful. So you can see down here the diabetes test, the hemoglobin A1C, I mean 10. It, your hemoglobin A1C should be below 5.7. 5.7% is with a 10% full blown diabetes. You see in four months, we took that to 10% to 6.7. Fasting glucose, 272 to 149. His insulin resistance, that's what I was talking about, your insulin resistance, an 8.1 to a three. 